Shiraz is a gentle provincial capital in southern Iran. Two and a half thousand years ago, the mountains around it were the heartland of an empire that stretched from India to the Mediterranean. In them lie the vast ruins of Persepolis, once the Versailles of its kings. This autumn, Shiraz and Persepolis have provided the setting for a very special sort of festival. developed the idea of a festival of art in Iran and afterwards we decided that it should be in Shiraz because of the famous poets and writers that we had in this uh, province and city and especially because we knew that for centuries the people of Shiraz have been always known by being great artists and great art lovers. For centuries, ancient Persia was the main bridge between East and West. Present-day Iran still looks in both directions. Artists and visitors arrive from all parts of the world. It's a bird! No. It's a plane! No! It's Superman! Stomp, stomp, stomp. music critics from the West and you've come here as guests. Uh, what kind of a meeting place is the festival for you? It seems to be a perfect genuine meeting place. It, obviously what interests us more is what happens in the East. Because what happens in the West is what we have all the time. But I've certainly enlarged my experience of West Eastern music a great deal and met a great number of Eastern musicians. I've never had the opportunity before to hear so many different uh, kinds of Eastern music from so many different countries in close proximity and it's, it's like a little encyclopedia of knowledge, a little encyclopedia of experience, elementary experience for most of us. Mm. It's quite natural that uh, the Tehran Orchestra should want to play Western music. It's a Western-based orchestra, and it's quite natural that they should want to show what they can do. <laughs> Tehran Symphony Orchestra playing Tchaikovsky. That was a, a genuine attempt at a kind of meeting which, I mean, wasn't terribly well played. The new university going up on the hills outside Shiraz was host to the festival. The meeting of the East and West here, how do you think it should affect 
Persian art and culture? Um, I think personally that we should keep our music, I mean, our tra traditional music the same as it was. We shouldn't change it at all. Whether it's a Persian baritone singing Carmen by night or French ballet by day, the ruins of Persepolis make a unique background. <laughs> patron of the festival, and the fact that she herself was partly educated in Paris reflects that curiously half-Oriental, half-Western quality that gives Iran its unique character and the festival its theme. Where does the budget come from? It's coming uh, one part from the oil company, which is giving the majority of it, then the government and the queen herself. And what is your own personal role in this festival? Uh, we are a committee of... No, yourself. Uh, myself, I'm the president of the festival. But Iran is modernizing all yes. the time. Do you think that Persian art should modernize also? It's not modernized, but change and become, from his time, yes. Westernize itself? No, westernize, no. My point of view is more um, sentimental than professional. I think that we should keep our traditional music. And, uh, of course, I think that the influence of the mu Western music will be inevitable. The whole country and all this group of mostly younger people who are interested in the arts and in the future of Iran are trying to work against this Westernization. My first encounter with Persian traditional music was uh, the most exciting thing I think that's happened so far. It's an excitement that's been repeated night after night, but there was this sudden first impact of this very fine art. A marvelous tar player. I've heard several others since. Yes, but none of Can them. You really I would have looked it up if I had the time, but the tar player on the first night. Ah, <laughs> oh, God, it's only over there. Most I marvelous. I'll stretch across and find it. <laughs> I will stretch across and find it.
powder pigeons sitting and playing the most ghastly arrangements for four hops of minuet by Boccherini is just too camp for me. I mean, I, I can't understand how, how they can send them out as artistic representatives. doesn't meet. It's the people who meet and their minds. The music itself doesn't, doesn't make any connection across.
Isn't it also slightly unreal to make this east-west distinction? It's real for us. But, I mean, we, we, there's yes. the familiar, which embraces Europe, and there's the yes. exotic, which is the eastern music. But surely for someone who lives here, oh, Moroccan music might be almost as distant as Debussy. of the Shiraz life to understand it. it. Reminds me a bit of Sicily, as a matter of fact. Palermo. The same kind of living in the streets that uh, most of the lower classes indulge in. One of the high points of the festival was Bismillah Khan playing the Shana an Indian oboe. Frankly, no, you see, because this is a music which is folkloric. I'm a classical musician. I'm uh, belonging to, 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 to the art of music, you know, the build-up, the architecture. And I'm a transmitter.
Well, I hope that it's sound. It, it has it a marvelous acoustic cabinet. It's fantastic. Yes, very good. And, and I hear there. from the from the side, it's very good. Well, I'm very happy about that. Many Eastern musicians fear that their traditional music may not survive the onslaught of Western technology and culture, and many Western musicians share their fear. But for better or for worse, these two worlds cannot be kept apart, and at Shiraz, they come face to face. <laughs> 